Hello, my name is Bob Foster, and I want to uh, give you a, a high-level overview of the new lab-based services tool that we're developing. I think it's going to be very popular with our customers. Uh, we plan on uh, delivering it in October of 2014. Those will run on Windows and AIX and Linux. And this is going to be what we call a, a, an evacuation tool, but it's really more of a, a simplified way to use lab partition mobility for our customers. And since it's lab partition mobility, it's support on multiple platforms. It's support on Power 6, Power 7, and Power 8. And we can use the HMC for our uh, control interface or FSM, which is a flex uh, uh, version of the HMC, and SDMC. Um, I'm going to create other videos that show a lot more of the technical details, but I wanted to give one video here that I will give a, a lot of uh, uh, people a high-level view of what we're going to do here and where I think some of the value is of this. Okay, so um, other videos will talk about all these icons here on the screen, but we're going to go right to the meat of it that's calling uh, LPM. So this is where we want to uh, go into this frame. And in this frame, uh, I have two HMCs that I've uh, attached this tool to. There are no agents that need to be installed anywhere. You just uh, point this tool to those HMCs and voila, we have it there. And I got one in Poughkeepsie and one in Austin. And I've been working with, I've set up a lab in the Poughkeepsie lab. And I have a server here. Let's say I have to do maintenance. Each one of these items here is a managed system or a frame, so to speak. Let's say we have to do manage um, some sort of maintenance on uh, this server. Or maybe, the customer just wants to move some uh, partitions around uh, with a simplified GUI. And this simplified GUI, I think, would be popular for customers that just need to do mo uh, multiple m migrations in a day. So I think there's going to be use for this in the, in the maintenance windows. But I think there's even more, be more use for it in the daily activities of doing live partition mobility across uh, many servers. So in this case here, we go say, oh, this partition this server has 20 partitions well I don't really want to click all 20 of these partitions to move them so we have a nice little shortcut we click here ah now I can move all 20 fantastic so now where am I going to move them to well, over here uh, we support remote HMC's but um, right now these are um, I'm going to move them to some other servers in Poughkeepsie and um, I'm going to move them to these two particular servers in Poughkeepsie uh, and you can see down here, here's the one we're taking stuff off of, the Thorad on the left is also on the right because they're both in Poughkeepsie, but uh, we're going to move them to these other two servers. So let's go validate and I'll unclick this. And now what it's doing is we had 20 partitions we wanted to move and we chose two different servers to move them to. Well, uh, depending on SAN connectivity or network connectivity, all 20 of those may not be eligible to be moved to those two servers. Uh, in fact, we'll see here that one of ours is not eligible to move to the, one of those servers because it's using a different feature on the Thorad that's not available on the destination. So we have to go through and check all these. And so this validation tool, you have one nice little screen that's going through and validating stuff. And... Uh, uh, I'm going to resort by success here to see if we have any left over. We still have a few left over. I'm going to pause this now to keep this video short, and uh, we'll come back as we get close to everything being validated. So I've sorted this column over here to successful so I can see which ones were successful and failed and which ones were still not completed. And like I said, this, uh, this particular LPAR can't go to uh, this 4 Bravo, JUPE4 Bravo FP1 server. But if I sort by LPAR name, we'll see that 11 can go to uh, 4 Delta. So great. So this tool has gone off and said, what, which of these partitions can be placed? Where can they be placed? So great. So we placed them. And uh, so now we go next. So now, 
so now we're on the placement screen here and I, I think this is a, a real uh, good aspect of the, the tool here the tool was able to take all the different partitions and figure out where they could go and could not go and in our case only one of them could not go where it needed to go and it packed them onto the servers and uh, you have two options of packing or striping packing is we'll place all the partitions on one server until it's fu fully utilized and we'll move to the next server so in this case you can see that for Bravo the one of the destination servers is uh, almost completely filled up it only has a third of a processor left whereas uh, the four Bra Delta has 1.2 so we packed as much onto four Bravo and start putting stuff on four Delta if I click striping that means we'll try to spread it across evenly so I'll click this and you see ah now we got it pretty even both of them still have about a CPU left and uh, we uh, change where we're going to move things but a lot of customers say well I want I need to have some more control so you have control over here you can go over here and say well no I really want this to go here and it moved it there and it updated the CPUs here so you can go through here there's multiple options here we can do there'll be another video about all these different features we can use here and when we get ready to use this this placement tool also understands enterprise pools can go out and see that you're coming from an enterprise pool box and you're going to an enterprise pool box and will um, help you uh, it will actually do the enterprise pools commands under the covers for you when we get ready to LPM things away so great so we're going to uh, choose this save, save uh, here you could save this plan for later and then execute this plan later but for this video we're going to go ahead and do it now and we can move uh, concurrent how many do we want to move concurrently at a time I'm going to choose eight here and then we hit next and um, oh I didn't mention that you can also adjust the MSP and uh, you can change the order of which ones you want to move first the order is based on the largest CPU go, moves first down to the smallest and you also can adjust which shared processor pool you want to go to okay great you do all that planning and save it so now we're going to execute it and it's getting ready to execute now and uh, I'm sorry, I'm uh, trying to get my, uh, make sure everything's going okay. So it's starting to uh, do some of our uh, moves. Great, okay. And uh, I'm having to adjust <coughs> my control system that you guys can't see on the screen, so that's why I'm having to pause here a little bit. So we can do up to eight at a time, um, um, and so it's going to start moving LPARs. Right now we can see five on the screen. Uh, there's more down below that are, are working or being moved on. So I want to pause it here because we don't want to watch this for a minute or two. Oops. So we've had a few successful here. It's still running. Um, you know, I, I, what I do is what I like to do is I like to sort by uh, whether we have you know this is an alphabetical sort, and so I have some successes right now, so I'm, I'm knowing that things are going pretty well here, and uh, we'll uh, just let it run for a while. Okay, we've got about seven now here, so I'm going to sort of rechange the order here so I can sort of track the uh, uh, what we have left here and watch these uh, count down here and then uh, so keep on trucking okay 11 are left to go 10 9 8 7 6 5 four three two about there fantastic so it finished moving the 20 L pars across those two other servers and then after that it comes up and says do you want to perform DPO the technical folks know that's dynamic platform optimization and that's something we do to help with power 7 affinity issues on the larger servers but we're not gonna do that right now but I'm just trying to give you guys the nice highlights of this so now we've evacuated 
the frame, and or we've moved some L parts around. In this case, we've evacuated the frame, so things are happening. So uh, once things are done, we'll go over, and then we will return the workload back over. So now we I went over to a new icon, and this is the and it says which server do you want to migrate back, or which the server do you want to you know return the, the partitions to? Well, we took them off of Thorad FP1, so that's where we want to return them to. So I hit next here, and um, yeah, I'm going to put that we want to see 20 items here. And so that here's the 20 L parts we want to move. They're spread across different frames. Oh, and look here, we have a little bit of a, uh, a migration running. If I hit reload here, that's a, a little bit of a stale data. And uh, that should go away in just a second here. Okay, so we have all 20 L parts are ready to be moved back to Thorad. So we go to next. And we're going to validate again because we don't know what happened here. Maybe they took out some memory or some processors or they took out, you know, the, they didn't bring the machine back up or, or uh, you know, a mul a multiple things. But we always do a validation before we move stuff. And that's why we've always done live partition mobility and that's why we do it now. So here, I'll go over here and I'll sort on, uh, you know, oh, the validate goes really fast. I'll uh, resort it so we'll see them fill up here. So uh, it's doing the validation. And the other thing it's also doing is that when we return these uh, L parts back, we return them back the same way we got them from. And what does that mean? Well, for those of you technical listening, you have virtual slot IDs. And we maintain, we read the virtual slot IDs we had before we moved it and we saved them and we're validating with those same virtual slot IDs to make sure the virtual slot IDs you had before are still there when we go back. If it's an empty frame, they should be there. We also, uh, customers map their uh, work, sometimes they map their partitions to different HBAs in the VIOS to uh, do some balancing of workload or to give a more uh, bandwidth to other applications or workloads and we maintain all the HBA mapping size also, we maintain the L priorities. We main we put it back the way we took it off. Okay, so great. Okay, so now we do next. So that we just did the validation and everything. Let's go go back to the same slots we validated all the slot numbers, the uh, uh, HPA mappings, and all that kind of stuff. And then in here, we also if maybe you didn't like this, maybe you said, well, I really don't want to move this one or another. But in this case, we will. Okay, so now, oh, let me move this over here so I can see my menu, okay. Now we got everything set up and we go next. And once again, you'll start to see it starts to migrate just like that other panel. Uh, we've seen this before. I'm gonna hit pause while it does that. Okay, so we don't have a, a watch paint dry here. I. Uh, only kicked off uh, four concurrent at a time. I forgot to put it up to eight, so it'll take a few more minutes. All right, so we've got about eight of these done. I, I like to now switch it over to here so I can see which ones we don't have done. So uh, I like this view better as now that we know it's working pretty well. Okay, so we're about done here, and uh, once again, we moved all these uh, partitions back to that evacuated server and uh, retained all its uh, uh, slot IDs and helper IDs and HPA mappings, and we also are given the option to do DPO again, and uh, we'll cancel out of that. And uh, we'll just go back to the home page here, and I think that's all I wanted to show you, so thanks very much for listening.